you. Thank you. Welcome to Six in the City, the Blair Witch Project of cable TV shows. Tonight we've got a great show for you. We've got um, Dave Gobel from the Ice Creamer. You're going to make us some chocolate boxes. And we have a very special guest right now. Take a look at this. What do you think of that? Solid gold encrusted with jewels. This belt belongs to our very special guest. Uh, let me see here. <laughs> WBF bantamweight champion of the world, Mr. Stephen Molitor. Stephen? How's it going? It's going great. It's going great. Welcome, uh, welcome to Six in the City. Thank you very much. How do you, uh, you like this belt? Oh, it's, it's the newest of my collection. I'm very, very excited about it. It's a very nice belt for sure. You like that? Excellent. Okay. Um, let me just, uh, let me ask you some questions. Now, you uh, obviously started out as amateur, uh, as an amateur boxer. What's the difference, would you say, between uh, amateur boxing and uh, professional boxing? Well, besides the fact that there's uh, no headgear and no t-shirts and the rounds are a lot, they're uh, three minutes instead of two minutes and 12 rounds instead of four rounds. Uh, it's just a different style, a little bit of a slower pace and, you know, just different technique, you know, like not tight defense, it's more of hit and get hit type of action. There's a lot of thumping. Oh, there's a lot of hitting going on, a lot more than the amateur. Really? No, no headgear, you're, you're not afraid of getting like a, you know, shot to the nose or? Uh, I'm afraid of it, of course, that's why I don't do it, because I, I do not want to get hit, I don't want to get cut, I just want to stay as pretty as possible. 11-0 <laughs> and 0 was a pro, eh? 11-0? and 11-0, 11 and, 0, and that is your third belt. What were the other two that you won? Uh, two months ago, February 15th, I knocked out Scotty Olsen for the Canadian Super Bantamweight Championship, and then one year ago, April 4th, I fought out at the Royal York Hotel for the WBF Intercontinental Championship of the World. You are, you are now the, uh, the WBF Champion of the World. Not Intercontinental, not, not Canadian, Intercontinental. The WBF of the World. You cover all the countries. You've, you've conquered the world, basically, for, for your weight class. For now, yeah. For now. I see. Now, how long have you been pro? Uh, about two and a half years. So, two and a half years, three titles. Yeah, my last three fights, all titles. Really? Yeah. So are they going to have to start making up titles for you <laughs> to win? Like oh, no, there's, there's lots of titles out there, but you know, there's, every one this is more important for me. My next fight, June 8th, I'll be fighting for another world title. June 8th, where's that going to be? Uh, Casino Niagara. Casino Niagara. Niagara Falls, Ontario. And yeah. who are you going to be fighting? Uh, Abu Orsoa from Ghana. I don't, know what he, I, I don't know what language that was. What was that? Ghana? <laughs> What's no, his name? Abu Orsoa. I, Took me a while to learn it, but you know, it's You're going to kill him. Now. You're going to kill him, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now that's going to be for the NABA title, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then I've, I've heard some rumors that you might get a big payday after that. Have you heard anything about that? Um, you know, rumors are always flying around, but uh, until it's signed on a contract, then it doesn't mean not anything. Now, I know that the, the, the WBF is, uh, is an up-and-coming kind of federation. Do you... Uh, Oh, here we go. We'll talk about that in a second because we've got your fight on the monitor right now. This is you and uh, Teofilo Menzueta. And I was at that fight. Yeah, I Maybe. believe this is, I think, near the end right before I finish him. It looks like it. Yeah, this is it where he just goes down for the third and final time of the, of the evening. Now, this right was there. a pretty long haul for you. This is, what, two minutes? <laughs> uh, this is, yeah, two minutes into the third round, yeah. So it was about uh, eight minutes altogether. Who's Six that? weeks of training for uh, eight minutes. <laughs> yeah. Now, Steve, I was at that fight. I was also at the fight a year ago when you won the uh, Intercontinental title, and that was another Dominican fighter you beat. That seemed to me like it was a tougher fight than this one. This one was, uh, this one was over pretty quick. The other one, you won a, a unanimous decision, a, an overwhelming decision, but it went the distance. This one was uh, no contest, really. Uh, well, you, you could say that, but the, the truth is that uh, the last guy was actually easier from a year ago. This guy was actually tougher to set. I had a lot of time off, me and Adrian worked on a lot of things, a lot of power shots, and you know, I just changed my style a lot different, I'm just a way better fighter than I was a year ago. So that's Adrian Teodorescu, your yeah, uh, my, trainer? Yeah, my trainer and manager is getting the, the belt put around my waist. You're a happy boy right there. Very happy man. The Canadian kid, Stephen Molitor. Now, you, uh, you changed your name, you used to be the bad boy? Yeah. Recently, within the last six months, I've signed with a new promoter. And they, th they thought it'd be a better idea for me, you know, to get away from the bad boy image. Like boxing's already had the black eye enough as it is with guys like Mike Tyson running around being crazy. So 
So let me go for a little cleaner image so the Canadian kid get Canada interested in me. It's a, it's a better idea. You fight uh, out of the Atlas Gym in Toronto? Yeah, Atlas yeah. Sports and Fitness Club in Give Toronto. Give us uh, a little bit of an idea of how much training you do, how frequently you train, because I think a lot of people think, maybe aren't aware of just how much a professional boxer trains. Uh, it's a full-time job. Like I, That's all I do is train. I get up in the morning and run. I work out at 11. I work out at 5.30. And by the end of the day, I'm just, it's all over. Like I'm dead tired. This is how many days a week? Six days a week. Sundays I have off, but I usually have to go for like a 50-minute run. Wow. So it's a full-time job, but everything's paid for. Like, my promoters and my sponsors pay for everything, so all they do is train, and that's it. And your sponsors are? U.S. Traffic, Orion Management, and Atlas, Atlas uh, Promotions. There's, Atlas a, there's a movie uh, being shot in yeah, the, actually, Atlas Gym right, right now? Yeah, actually, right now, yeah. There's, it's called Against the Ropes with uh, Omar Epps and Meg Ryan. Wow. They're just doing a, they've been there for about a week on the set there, so we yeah, work it out so they'd be there when I have my time off and then when I get back they'll be gone. And they're using your belt. I, I, yeah, I, I, using my Canadian belt. They actually wanted to use this one but I just won. I said uh, it's a little too soon to take You want to go and show that one off yeah, to your hometown right. fans, right? That's right. That's right. Now your, uh, your trainer Adrian uh, Teodorescu also has a, a claim to fame a bit. Yeah, he, uh, he was the coach of Lennox Lewis when Lennox won the gold in 88, so Olympics. And he also trained him for about his first 10 professional fights. And then he, when he fought Holly, Evander Holyfield for the first time, he was also, uh, Lennox called him and said, you know, I, I want you to come work with me for this fight specifically. What? So he called him for that fight. And Lennox comes by the gym quite often. He calls. That's a good guy. We're going to see Lennox fight uh, Kirk Johnson, the Canadian. I want to see that fight. Oh, that'd be good, especially if they had it in Canada. It'd be yeah, good and Canada. you on the undercard. Yeah, that great. would be the way it would Showcase work, right? Showcase my opportunities for sure. Yeah. But, um, you know, this boxing's a crazy world. You just never know what's going to happen. Is that something, that, is it more crazy in the pros or like, I mean, there's, there's, there's always talk about controversy in boxing. Is it, is it more in the pros, less in the pros? How oh, it's think? definitely more in the pros for sure because, you know, when money gets involved, money's the root to all evil and, you know, yeah. people just are in for themselves. So it's definitely very dirty. But you've experienced some crazy decisions in the amateur game too. Oh, you know, very, right? very crazy decisions like uh, at the Pan American Games when I fought the Cuban, a fight I thought I won, the Canadian Championships, a fight I thought I won. So now I'm missing the pros, I'm just going to just knock them out and leave, leave it up to myself. <laughs> <laughs> if you knock them out, nobody can get, take that away That's from right. You. Good choice. That's what I did in my uh, pro boxing career as well. <laughs> um, okay, well that's great. Uh, in a moment, we're going to uh, have Dave Gober on the set, and we're going to be making little chocolate boxes to uh, help with our physique, I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, don't forget, Dave, we have to thank our sponsor, Zares, yeah. Fabric Land, and the brick. Zaris makes those great little sandwiches that we eat, you know, this set. All the, the guys out there eat while we're sweating here. <laughs> uh, this, this set is donated by the brick. And uh, Fabricland has, has uh, given us this wonderful uh, broadcloth for the curtain. So uh, we certainly appreciate that. And uh, in, we're going to cut to a break right now. And in just a moment, we'll be back right after uh, fake laughter. in the kitchen in, uh, in station. And Dave, why don't, you, uh, why don't you tell us what we're going to do? Well, we're going to make some chocolate boxes for Mother's Day. Uh, we've prepared some chocolates that we'll put in when the boxes are done. We'll uh, roll out some chocolate and we'll let it set. We'll cut all the pieces and assemble the boxes, including a lid, that uh, make a nice gift for Mother's Day. So you looked at the, at the skills that Dave and I possess and you thought, I, I better stick with the boxes. Well, I have done roses and stuff with third graders, but this required backing off the boxes, so. <laughs> okay, that's probably a good idea. All right, so what's the first step here? Well, the first step is to take this chocolate here. This is uh, Oh my. This is a dark chocolate couverture from Belgium. And what exactly is couverture? What does that mean? Couverture is chocolate that's been relaxed with extra cocoa butter. It has uh, extra cocoa butter in it to give it. It smells like cocoa. Take a, take a whiff there. Oh, there's cocoa there. Yeah. So this is relaxed with cocoa butter. It's a little creamier, maybe. Uh, it makes it flow better. It makes it easier to work. Makes it harder. Makes it uh, shinier and stronger. 
Very much stronger. Cocoa butter is... A little more zip to it? A little more snap. Because it's... Uh, what? Would you say it has moxie? <laughs> yes, it has moxie. Did you catch that, Dave? Yeah, that was good. A little shot. reference for the, for the avid fans. They'll yeah. remember last week when yeah. moxie was used. Yes, yes. Couverture chocolate. It's got moxie. Is that like your secret word of the day, moxie? <laughs> That's our secret word of the day. The little duck comes down and bells go ringing when moxie is said. What's so this uh, utensil called here, Dave? A spatula. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to ask the smart question, but I guess I'll stop. It's just is a this spatula. a spatula, too? Yep. It's that's kind just of an a, angled one. It's an offset spatula. This is the milk chocolate, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, that's milk chocolate. The difference between dark and milk, dark chocolate mm -hmm. is the ground up what, beans of the cocoa plant. Mm -hmm. And then to that, they add sugar and extra cocoa butter. And the difference with the milk chocolate, to the milk chocolate, they then add powdered milk. Mm -hmm. Hence, milk chocolate. Oh, see. So you're just flattening this out right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're gonna. This is basically we're making the material to cut the sides and the uh, and the bottom out of. Okay. And uh, this is on a marble slab. Why marble? Uh, well, it's granite, but granite. It's just simply that it has mass to. You know, like when you touch cold pavement in the basement, it feels very cold. That's because it just it, it absorbs the heat really quickly. Okay. That's why it feels cold. Mm -hmm. This absorbs the heat quickly. Just helps the chocolate set up faster. Okay. You can do this at, at home on your kitchen countertop. It just takes a long time to set up, that's all. This doesn't look like it's gonna be real thick uh, when you're done with it, Dave. No, we're looking for maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter. It's kinda of warm in the studio, right? So uh, may, does that affect uh, the, the setting of the chocolate? Uh, as long as the, the granite's cold enough, mm -hmm. we'll be just fine. If the, if the granite's not cool enough, then, yeah, definitely the sound surroundings will cause a few problems. Let's just see if we have enough for one. We're making some plans here. We got the, the blueprint. Yeah, these are the, uh, this is the, the size of the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then we have, you know, each of the, the sides. Okay. And then the ends as well. And yeah. for the lid, we're going to do something a little different, which okay. is going to require two colors of chocolate that we're going to stripe. And it's going to be a rather neat look. And a, and a hinge. No, no hinge. Oh, no this hinge. is the bottom. Can we see this? This is the bottom. It's made of is this Bristol board. Yes. It's simple Bristol board. Anyone can get this at home, and um, you can get. Tear apart kind of cereal boxes. This Tear is, apart cereal. What kind of paper is this? This is uh, silicone parchment, which is basically paper that's been impregnated with silicone. Oh, and we all have that at home. Well, you can buy it in a grocery store. Sure. In the grocery store, though, it comes in a roll. So if you want to do this, you should like lay it out and. Mm -hmm set it between something flat, otherwise it'll always want to roll back up. Yeah, crazy, crazy silicone paper, right? Eh? What do you got here, Dave? Um, to combat the heat in the... To combat the heat in here, I brought some uh, cold gas Look spray. at that! Woo! Wow. It's just a compressed gas that, besides being lots of fun, mm -hmm. it creates... <laughs> <laughs> it creates cold. Mm -hmm. Just to help us, you will really will need this when we're actually putting the pieces together. Definitely, because we'll put a little bit of wet chocolate on the corners, and we'll give it a shot with cold spray, and then we can take our hands off it so it doesn't get all melted and get fingerprints sure. all over. So, huh? It's setting can up I, very nice. Can nicely. I feel? Yeah, go ahead. Dave cops a feel. Yeah, and you can tell that's been impregnated too. That paper. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Oh. Oh yeah. Felt that little guy move. <laughs> that's cool. He's actually ready to cut. Wow. Yeah. It's ready to cut. It's ready to cut. Let's see if it peels off here. Uh, we'll need a couple more minutes. Well, let's uh, maybe we can go to a break and uh, and we'll give it a little bit of time to set. Dave, that's a good idea. Why don't we uh, why don't we cut to a break right now? And uh, we're not going to cut to a break right now. In fact, um, we are going to just uh, we're going to keep motoring on. Apparently, that's the a good uh, idea. The girl behind the camera has just told me that we're going to continue. So, uh, gosh darn it. Well, let's talk uh, about your business, the ice creamery. And, okay, uh, before we go on about that, my knife is over on the utility tray over there, and I need my little razor blade. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's get someone to uh, to go over to the side and get our get our utility knife way over there. We are tap dancing at this moment. We are just falling <laughs> maniacs right now. <laughs> I have a feeling that knife is going to magically appear any moment now, Dave. I can feel you, it uh, coming. Hopefully, it won't be thrown. 
because it is, after all, a knife. It's just like a box cutter. It's a utility knife. Box cutter. It's a utility knife, like a carpet knife. There we go. And there we go. Okay. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Thank you. Thank you Magically, wow. the knife appeared. Because yeah. we're ready to cut. Ooh. This, is, this works well. All right, Dave is ready to cut one. So, number one, we're going to do a bottom. Sure. Get the bottom done there. We cut right through the paper, mm -hmm. leaving the paper on, because that gives us a nice finish, allows us to handle it without leaving fingerprints. That's very important. You can't leave fingerprints on the uh, this is really thick chocolate. No, because <laughs> that's unhygienic. Do you want to cut one? No, no, just go ahead. You're doing a really good job. <laughs> okay, so I'll cut out three bottoms. Mm -hmm. One for me, one for John, and one for Dave. And you got to keep stirring this stuff. Yes, right? You do, yes. Can't let it set. I'll stir this. This is, uh, <clears throat> this is my job. I'm the chocolate apprentice. What's the, what's the Latin term for a chocolate apprentice? What was that? I'm not sure. So are we going to get to taste some of this stuff later on? Yes, you actually are. Excellent. You can have the off-cuts. Off-cuts? I love off-cuts. Off-cuts, yes. I know, I've worked with you before. I know you love off-cuts. Actually, uh, for Christmas, Dave, uh, Dave and I built a house out of chocolate for my, uh, my mother. Is that right? Oh, yeah. What are off-cuts? Well, you'll They're see like shingles. Old. Is that like leftovers? It's like leftovers. Yeah, uh, exactly. Do you, do you have kids, Dave? Do you have any kids? Yeah, yes, two but of them. They must love your uh, work. Uh, yeah, actually. You let them lick the bowl at, the, at work when you're... No, that's a problem. Not even at home. Not even at home? Not even at home. Now, do you get asked to do uh, a whole bunch of um, chocolate things for your, your schools and stuff like that that you support? Right. Yes, I do. And do you always say yes to that? Or is there like, you know, there's a point in which you've, you've saturated the chocolate market at a certain school and you have to move on to... Are you, uh, are you hitting me up or something? No, no, I'm just curious. <laughs> Taking conversation because you're the you're the chocolate man. It looks like you're, you know, the difference between a candy shop and what you do is you're like a craftsman. This is your this is your craft. Am I correct there? Uh, yeah, I guess you would say that. Chocolate's a very versatile stuff. You can do a lot of things with it. You can take um, gelatin. Mm -hmm. Like Jello. Yeah, gelatin like Jello. You make a strong gelatin solution or a jello solution, and you can make a molding of anything you'd like. You can make a molding of this knife, and then cast it in chocolate after you take the knife out of the gelatin. There's anything you can do. You build up things full of with uh, eggs, and uh, you know, like actual egg shells or or the no, protein like casted egg. casted eggs, like casted chocolate eggs, and you can use those form the basis of a lot of things. You make legs, and uh, you know, you might have two legs for the two eggs for the legs of, uh, and then a larger egg for the body and a couple for the arms, maybe a round one for the head, some half for the ears. Wow. And you can build anything you want. How do, you, uh, how do you get started in this, Dave? In the chocolate yeah. world or everything? In the, in the, in the chocolate Well, world. I know how you probably came into the world. I, I mean, how do no, you start with the chocolate? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, my wife and I, she wasn't my wife at the time. She went, her and I went to Europe, and we were backpacking for six months. And you know I, what? I'm going to have to interrupt us right here because uh, I think we're going to have to take a short break. Maybe we'll pick up that story when we come back. Tell you what, Dave, we'll pick up the, uh, the backpacking chocolate story when, uh, when we come right back. Six in the City. Stay tuned. What, what is Six in the City? So what is Six in the City? What is Six in the City? What is Six in the City? Six in the City. It's a satirical look at the ironies of living in a metropolis the size of Sarnia. And I'm going to be in it, right, John? Yeah, you're going to be in it. We're going to have local politicians, famous celebrities, athletes, maybe even the guy next door who's done something interesting or amazing that you didn't know about. And me too, right? I'm going to be in it. Yeah, you're going to be in it, man. For sure. Back off. So tune in to Six in the City, Kojiko 6, Sunday, at 6 p.m., I guarantee you'll be hooked. And I'll be there too, right? Yeah, you'll be there too. So don't forget, 6 in the City, Sunday night, 
Kojiko 6. So you're going to watch, right? And we're back with Dave Gobro from the Ice Creamery. We're a making chocolate boxes. Dave, when, uh, when last we spoke to you, uh, you were backpacking across the country with your wife. Why don't you uh, finish the boxes and tell us about your, uh, your adventures? Okay, well, we're just going to break the pieces loose that we've cut here. We're pulling them all out and getting rid of the excess. Excess. Well, thank you. And, uh, yeah, we were backpacking through Europe, and uh, we really fell in love with the way Europeans like their confectionery. They treat it as it's a very important thing. It's not given any second fiddle. Uh, ingredients are the best, uh, processes are the best, respect for the people who make it <laughs> is, is very high. Um, this is all just the, the excess chocolate from our cuttings. And I noticed that you gave Dave a piece. Uh, <clears throat> yes, he did, in fact. Here, John. Yeah, that's delicious. You like cuttings too, there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not so much bigger than So these are, all, these are the pieces that we've made mm -hmm. for what we're doing, mm -hmm. and these are the building blocks of our little chocolate boxes. This is the foundation. This is the building blocks of what we're doing. That's right. And all chocolate's reusable a hundred times. So, of course, you should not waste Never anything. waste. Never waste, no. Recycle. Always recycle your chocolate. Okay. Well, let's get moving on here. Now, is this the kind of chocolate they use in chocolate bars, like Oh Henry Snickers? Uh, no, not by a long shot. <laughs> no. There's uh, a great quality difference. The, uh, the focus on this chocolate is... is the amount of uh, bean or chocolate product that's actually in the chocolate is very high mm -hmm. and the amount of sugar is kept low where the beans come from they almost like the pedigree of the the chocolate beans is very high where from, do they come from um, most of the beans come from the Ivory Coast of Africa Wow being the majority producer of the beans but a lot of the beans you know are in the chocolate here come from uh, smaller Caribbean islands in the... Um, Caribbean? Yeah, but that's what the word I was looking <laughs> for. Yeah, in the Caribbean. Uh, there's a lot of, in South America, there's a lot of gourmet beans that come out of there. Um, they have, you know, milder, less acidic flavors. They have their own personalities. No, I couldn't. I'm all chocolate out. Chocolate they have their out. own personalities, their own different flavors, just like wine. These varying regions produce varying flavors. And, and those things are kind of respected and looked for. Okay, now we're going to put these together. Here we go. This is we it. Have this our is three bottoms. Okay. And now each of you guys has. Oh, we get to do something. Yeah. Right two now. ends a person and two oh. sides. Okay. Now all you have to do okay. is pick up um, <coughs> a dab of chocolate. Okay, and I'll do mine. It's like a paintbrush. We'll use yeah. it as glue. Yeah, and we're going to glue this together. Wow. That one's broken. I mean, I, yeah, I noticed mine's broken too. John's broken. You know. I'm okay with that. You'll notice Dave's a bit of a whiner. John paid me extra <laughs> to make sure his were in good shape for this. Out of the huge Kojiko budget that we have. <laughs> so we guys, Dave, where do they like dark chocolate? We like uh, milk chocolate here in uh, Canada, right? North America more. Than Actually, it's worldwide. It's a, a milk chocolate is the leading. Is that yeah, right? It accounts for 75, 80 percent of actual chocolate consumption in the world is all milk even in Europe is the Swiss right? all the Swiss eat nothing but milk is that right okay. yeah there's just uh, dark chocolate tends to have more uh, pronounced flavors and if you were to try and um, if you were trying to eat dark chocolate and for the sake of just eating the chocolate hey, it's pretty thick but we can just give her a shot of it just makes the chocolate set up Pretty quickly. Okay. I can't actually ahead. reach the thing, so I'm. You know what? I'm just going to try and put pierce with milk. Oh, I can do it with milk. Yeah, sure. right okay. Just use your finger and just apply a little bit. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't. That's unhygienic. The sanctity we, of this. Yes, this we would chocolate, never but just stick our fingers. Check me out. Look, I'm a. I'm like a high-speed construction. Yeah, it's not guy. a race, man. Yes, I know, and it will show in the end. You want to do it right, not fast. It's a race, as far it's as I'm concerned. It's commercial, isn't it? Although I am first to get good, then you get bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm just dipping. I'm going right from there. Dave's double dipping. <laughs> okay, okay, mine's done. Okay, and uh, so and I'm just going to put a little Bondo. <laughs> you could run it up the inside corner if you oh. like. Oops, sorry. All right. Mine's, okay. Mine got a little, a, a tiny bit messy. Yeah. Okay. I think I overdid. Check it. mine out. Okay. That's nice. Oh, sorry. You know what? Yeah. I'm going to let you. Uh, 
Let me seal it up. Give it a blast of cold. Did you not want to peel your paper off first, or you just... Um, no, that was paper the impregnated paper. paper. I didn't really see it. That was the vinyl else. cladding, actually. Well, there's more paper. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> okay. So now our boxes are all together, and when those set, we're just going to take this brush, yep. and we'll dip some dark chocolate and brush over to cover up all our finger marks and all the seed marks, and we're going to work on a top. And the top is a little bit special here. Yeah. Clear room here for the top. Oh, we got a clear room for the top. Yeah. And this is the milk chocolate, right? This is the milk chocolate, yes. That's milky and chocolatey. Yeah. Does that count as your daily allotment of calcium if you eat? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. A simple answer <laughs> for a simple person. <laughs> Does your wife watch this show? <laughs> Not that I know of. Oh, oh so, okay. Your wife doesn't even know where you are right now, does no, she? No, she doesn't, actually. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> You're a wise guy, eh? <laughs> okay. Ah. Back this way. There you go, Dave. Get some of this excess off of here. Yeah, I get the old excess off there. Huh? Okay. And then when this sets up, we'll go throw a layer of dark over top. Okay. Do you need some stuff here? Nope. No, Thanks. this has got to set first, which will take a couple minutes. Okay. All right. Well, while that's setting, why don't we take a quick break, and we'll re be right back with uh, Six in the City. Mayor of Mayor. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't... Uh, I don't know who that is. You don't know who it is? Well, for those of you watching at home, the oh, mayor... Oh, no, they don't have a judge. They don't have a mayor there. Well, that's, I'm sorry your time was up. <laughs> You're right, there isn't a mayor of Wilkesport. But... <laughs> so the bail is 468. I didn't think my time was up. That's a... Thank you, and we're back. The uh, Six in the City kitchen set. And now we had a little technical difficulty because of the heat from the, uh, the, the studio lights. What's happening to the, the lid here? It's just not setting up. It's, it's not just, setting up. No, it's just too warm in here. If the lid had set up, we could, why don't you take some of those? We just fill up a box with a nice little assortment here. Oh, yeah. A little Belgian hazelnut seashells. <laughs> my favorite. Some nougat squares. I'll nougat. Some. <laughs> and mint hearts. You want to... Show that to the audience now? Sure. Maybe it, I, I'm going to lift up. This is John's box. See? Everybody can see. This is my chocolate box that I'm making for my wife for Mother's Day. <laughs> I'll accept this chocolate because this, this one has my name on it. Oh, I'm mm. sorry. I guess I was overfilling uh, my box. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> hey, these are really good chocolates. Oh, thank you. In fact, I would go as far as to say, these are chocolicious. <laughs>